Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Synopsys with Ralph Iverson, who's going to talk to about some of the problems that start showing up at 5 nanometers and 3 nanometers. Ralph, what are you seeing as some of the big issues that are showing up at 5 and 3 nanometers? And are they brand new, or are they something that we've been seeing for a while? I wouldn't call them brown, brand new. I would say they're more intense. They're stronger issues. They're stronger effects. So why don't you draw some of this out for us? Okay, um, at small uh, dimensions, five nanometers and less, we're talking about the drawn dimensions, which is really still much larger than the actual fabricated dimensions of various structures that are in there. Details about the fin may have um, uh, diamond shapes that are, are very uh, sub-nanometers even. And so if you want to analyze that and get a good capacitance value, you can't just discretize everything at a few nanometer grid. You have to do a method like um, random walk approach, for example, that has no grid associated with it to get accurate results at that level. Are the shapes going to be more restricted in the future? Do we have to have uh, rectangles versus some of the polygons that we've had in the past? Well, right in the past, we've usually analyzed things kind of block, blockish. And now we have to worry more about the slopes, the actual uh, uh, shapes of the edges, it will be a problem. So what are we looking at on the board here? Uh, this is a traditional fin, so older technologies may be seven, but now things are getting smaller down to five nanometers. Uh, basically, the part that's larger is epitaxial silicon. It's got a diamond cross-section in it, and maybe only over part of it. And when it goes under the gate, it becomes a rectangle cross-section. So it's very detailed. We're talking about only a few nanometers here to, of where this change happens. As, as the geometries get tighter, what changes here? Um, the intensity of the electric field near the device can get much bigger. This distance from the gate to where the fin starts to stick up can get very small. Um, the distance from where the gate hits the fin sideways here, depending on this gate oxide here that I can't draw very well, um, that could be quite intense. So as the gate, gate oxide thins out, what changes there as well? Well, with thinner gate oxide, you'll get a larger capacitance involved with the, the gate oxide. In addition, people will use materials with fairly high dielectric constants, giving you even a larger capacitance. Wires are thinner here too, right? What impact does that have? Uh, the thinner wires give you higher resistance. You want to make them thinner so that you have less capacitance, but then you have larger resistance. And unfortunately, unlike the interconnect level, this doesn't really scale. Uh, so it's always a, an issue in making the, the fabrication process in deciding how big to make your wires. And if you're, as you start getting more resistance in the wires, you also increase the heat, you increase uh, things like electromigration, crosstalk, other types of noise. What impact does that have? Well, it'll de be degrading if you have uh, uh, higher, higher current uh, densities. Um, but the main thing is that you need to model the variation that's going to happen. Uh, because you, you might design at a given point, but you don't know what's going to happen if your etch is too large, if your etch time is a bit higher than you expect it to be. You may have uh, metal being further down or fins being a little bit larger. Um, and all those require actually separate analysis because you can't just project based on a simple formula. So you would have to recreate the different layout. And what's really useful in that is to have a technology file, a file that, that generates the physical model that also has parameters to specify that physical model, such as how, fi how big the fin grows or how thick the poly is. And those can all be parameters in a very parameterized technology file. And the capacitance is also related to some extent to actually what's on the chip to the layout of that chip, right? So you may have capacitance in one part that you didn't expect versus another. Uh, yes, and that's uh, also the importance of including in your model as much as you can of higher level metal, for example, that's in there will influence it. Even though the structure may look the same from M0 on down, the capacitances can be different because of overlying metal that may or may not be in that particular instance of a transistor. As we start getting into EUV, uh, 
things like multi-patterning, the understanding about how you etch that metal and how clear that metal is etched has an impact on some of this stuff too. Uh, basically, it's how well have you drawn your chip. What does that do to capacitance? Um, I'm not sure that we've been given good models yet of, of multi-patterning. Um, we've been given approximate models that treat like M1A and M1B almost exactly the same kinds of formulas. Yet I know that they don't necessarily go down at the same time, so they should have maybe completely different edge characteristics. Um, and I don't trust what I'm getting, but what we've seen is basically no variation. We've never seen any variation in like alignment between MA, M1A and M1B. We haven't seen that, but we can handle it if it's given to us. As we move into new gate structures, so gate all around, for example, what impact does that have? Uh, what changes is really the capacitance, as far as I'm concerned, what changes is the capacitance to ground. And it changes in a good way for parasitic extractors, because there's always been a problem of deciding which capacitance is part of the device model that goes in the net list as part of that device and it's so associated with parameters of the device versus the capacitance, the parasitic capacitance you extract. Before gate all around, you had these components, for example, underneath that go to ground that are very diffuse. And after gate around, uh, you're basically going to be raising the height of the fin coming in. And this interface here is not going to be nearly as diffuse. It'll be easier for us to separate cleanly and decide where the device capacitance stops, right here at the edge, I would advise versus where the parasitic capacitance starts, everything outside. How about new materials? So we, we've heard a lot of new materials being suggested for both uh, chips, for substrates, for the interconnects. How does that impact this? Well, for capacitance, the actual material doesn't have much of an effect for the conductor, but for resistance it does. So, for example, in one, in one technology file I have, I have uh, complete resistivity tables for a lot of different materials. And if you want to switch which material you're gonna try using, tungsten versus cobalt versus uh, anything else, you basically just switch which table you're looking, you're using to find the resistance values. And that will give you the different resistance uh, network. So from the standpoint of the tools, the tools will be ready once the technology is ready, right? Once this, the new nodes roll out. This is really in advance of where Oh, the tools are ready now. It's really the modeling, the technology file that needs to be updated to change a traditional fin fit to get all around or to vertical devices. And the, uh, the language in the technology file is already there for supporting all these devices. It just, we have not created a technology file yet for a vertical fin fit because we haven't been given that spec yet. And that's coming from the, primarily from the fabs? From the fabs and the research labs, yes. Ralph Iverson, thanks for a great explanation of a really interesting move for technology. Thank you very much, Ed. It's been a pleasure talking to you.